There's a question in the Leaving Cert Art History exam that recurs every year in one form or another. And in order to attempt that question, you have to have visited an exhibition in a gallery or a museum. So in this series of videos, we're going to look at the exhibition in the Glebe Gallery and cheer more. And we're going to look at different aspects of that question. And hopefully at the end of this, you'll be better prepared to attempt that exam question. In other videos we're going to look at what's in the exhibition and the various themes we're going to explore those and we're going to look at how you can make meaning from the artworks and from the themes in the exhibition but in this first video we're going to just take an overview of the exhibition and look at ways of criticizing the exhibition and examine tools that you could apply to any exhibition or any artwork Here at the Glebe House and Gallery, we have a permanent collection, which is always on exhibition in the Glebe House. But we also mount a series of temporary exhibitions in the Glebe Gallery. And that's what we want to focus on here. That program changes every year and reflects the sort of interests that we think our visitors have. This year we had a series of four exhibitions planned, but because of coronavirus, we weren't able to deliver any of them. So we had to very quickly change our plans. But that process of developing temporary exhibitions is something that your examiners want to see that you have an understanding of. So I'll just go through the sort of steps that we would take when we're putting an exhibition like that together. The first thing is to develop an idea or a concept or a theme for the exhibition and to explore that theme quite thoroughly. And once the curatorial group, the people that are putting the exhibition together, have decided on the sort of things that they want for the exhibition, then we have to go and look for those things. And we would borrow typically from other institutions, maybe like the National Gallery or the Irish Museum of Modern Art. Um, and we frequently lend to exhibitions here from our collections at the Glebe House and Gallery contacting artists or the artist's family if they've died is another great way of finding art um, and very often you might be working with a contemporary artist who is only starting to make the work that you're hoping to show next year or the year after then when you have sourced the artwork and arranged loans you would organize transport and that's carried out by professional art transporters they collect the artworks, they wrap them or crate them up if they have to, and then they bring them here where we unwrap them, take them out of their crates, condition report them, make sure that they're in good shape. Uh, and then we begin the process of laying the exhibition out. We should already have a good idea where everything's going to go, but that can change um, when you start to see that things work together or don't work together. And that design process involves thinking about how the visitor will see the exhibition and how the visitor will read the exhibition, will they understand it. And here's the crucial thing about exhibitions. They should tell stories. And as a visitor to an exhibition, you really only have to ask yourself three very simple questions. What's the story? How's it being told? And can I connect with it? Can I understand it? And if you ask those three questions at any exhibition in any museum or any gallery, you should be able to criticize the exhibition. You should be able to come away and think, well, I didn't think it was a great story or I didn't understand the story. I didn't understand the language, didn't understand the labels. Um, I was uncomfortable. It was too bright. It was too dark. It was too warm. There was nowhere to sit. And we would have gone through all those steps for the exhibitions that we had planned here last year. But just to start at the very beginning and ask why we have museums and why we have galleries. The name museum literally means a place to think, a place to muse. So we are learning institutions and you should expect to come away from a museum or gallery visit enriched. You should expect to have learned something. 
If you haven't, I will be quite critical of the people that run those institutions and I will be saying that they're maybe not doing as good a job at explaining the wonderful things they have and at showing you the possibilities to learn and develop. It's really good to be able to point that out in your exam also because examiners again like to see that. They like to see that you understand the purpose of going to a museum, of going to a gallery and an exhibition and they like to see that you can find what's wrong with it as well as what's right with it. And as curators we're trying to tell a story in language that people will understand and sometimes it's difficult and complicated but if we have done our job successfully you should always be able to get something of benefit from an exhibition. You should be able to learn and grow from the things that you see in an exhibition. But 2020 was a very unusual year and we had to cancel the exhibitions that we had planned and then look for something to replace those exhibitions with. And it was obvious that we would look to our permanent collection because it was so accessible and available to us and try and develop an exhibition from that. And we do exhibit the collection quite a lot in other institutions and galleries. So it's something we've done before, but I suppose because we've done it before, we wanted to try and do something we hadn't presented in other spaces. So that's what this exhibition is. It's looking at the collection differently. And those are the sort of themes that we're going to explore in the next couple of videos. For this one though, the crucial thing is trying to figure out what the story is. Is it easy to get around the gallery? Is it comfortable? Is it well lit? And we'll look at those things a little bit more closely now. But coronavirus created even more problems than just having to cancel the planned exhibition programme and replace it with something else. There were lots of other little things that we had to consider, like how many people could fit into the gallery, and we had to consider physical distancing so that people wouldn't bunch up too much and that they would move around the gallery in a one-way system. These are all things we normally wouldn't consider when putting an exhibition together. So after looking at lots of different themes, we settled on four very simple ideas. We had to get out some of our best pictures. It's always important to play the greatest hits. They'll always be in exhibitions that we do in other institutions because they're just what people want to see and what people associate with the Glebe Gallery and with our collection here. The second thing we did was that we asked staff members to pick one or a small group of artworks that they particularly liked and to explain why they liked them. And then we looked at artworks that are hidden in the collection. So if you go on a tour of the Glebe House, some things will be in corners or underneath more impressive artworks, maybe in darker areas. So your eye isn't drawn to them, but they're brilliant pieces of art. So this was an opportunity to get them out and look at them a little bit more closely. And the final part of the exhibition is a sort of a sketch for an exhibition that we're putting together over the next few years based on a collection of neckties that we have here at the Glebe House. And with all that in mind, we very quickly decided that we would only have pictures in the exhibition. So we wouldn't have sculptures or three-dimensional objects that would create obstacles for people to walk around. And also we would space the pictures out. So we would have a lot less pictures than we would normally have in an exhibition. The Glebe Gallery has been converted from what had originally been a stable block. So it's a long, narrow farm building and it's on two floors, but the ceilings are quite low. So we're limited in the size of artworks that we can show in the gallery. And for the most part, the sort of pictures that we show here are domestic in size. So the same sort of size as pictures that you might have in your own home. It has been converted though, so it is very museum-like or gallery-like. The walls are white, the ceiling's white, it's open plan, um, it has museum lighting and it has museum temperature and humidity controls. But it is very neutral, so when you put pictures against it, they all look okay. If we look at these pictures where they normally hang in the Glebe House, you can see it's a bit more complex. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of relationships and a lot of interactions. 
Whereas on a gallery wall, the curators or the team that put the exhibition together can easily tell the story because there's nothing else to get in the way. They have an artwork and they have a label. It's an easy way to tell stories. It's an easy way to help people to make meaning. And here's where you can pick up marks in your exams. If you can point out things that could have been improved upon, or if you can show where things have worked very well, examiners like to see that level of understanding of your visit to the exhibition. At the end of this video, there's a link to a video tour of the whole exhibition. It's a much slower version of the opening titles here. And it's a walk through the exhibition that starts at the start and goes in the order that we expected people to look at the exhibition right to the very end. So spend a little bit of time looking at that. Pick out your favorite pictures, but also pick out things that you didn't like. There's a series of videos about looking at art and five of the pieces from this exhibition are in that series. So we'll give you links to those as well. And there's also a link to the tour of the Glebe House. So you can see these things where they normally live. One of the best things about this exhibition though is that because these pictures normally can only be seen in the Glebe House, and because the tours of the Glebe House are 45 minutes long, and there's a lot to get through in that 45 minutes, you really only get a second or two to look at these things if they catch your eyes at all. In this exhibition though, you do have the opportunity to stand in front of an artwork and spend as much time as you want with it. And I think for us here at the Glebe Gallery, that was our favorite thing about the exhibition, that people got to spend a little bit more time looking at artworks that they liked. Thank you.